Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you once again for joining me for tea time. Today we have some Chinese oolong tea with a little bit of sage honey. So, so, so good. This is good. This is one of those good morning cup of teas that just, uh, they just hit the spot, just hit the spot. Anyways, guys, thank you once again for joining me. So today we're gonna be talking about Canon. Now, I told you about this day was coming like many months ago. Finally, Canon is releasing their 90D. Now, you all know that this video that we're shooting currently is being shot with an 80D, and we've been doing so for a long time. And I think the results are pretty good. I think it looks all right for 1080p, right? The thing that I like about the 80D is that it just tracks me. It tracks really well. So if it loses me, like I'm off screen, it doesn't see my face and it might focus over here. As soon as I come back, it's on my face again. I don't have to worry about like some other folks out there, we're not gonna name names, where literally the whole video after this ends up being focused on the background and they're blurry. We don't have that fear when it comes to the Canon ADD. Their dual pixel AF really does a great job. Well, the 90D is now out and I wanna to talk to you guys about it. I know we hate going through specs, but we're gonna to have to. But before I get into it, I want to just reiterate from the last video. If you guys haven't went over to the brand new community that I started at community.jchristina.com. Once again, it's community.jchristina.com. Do so, go check it out. There's so many great people over there. There's a lot of great banter going back and forth, a lot of educational stuff going on, and no trolls, okay? The moderators over there are awesome. So check out that community. Also, don't forget, I'm going to keep on running this for the rest of this week, this 20% off my brand new product, and that's the Aurora Microfiber Cleaning Cloths. Check those things out. They are amazing. They clean everything, all your hard surfaces when it comes to your touchscreen in your car. It could be iPhone, your iPad, your tablet, your monitors, your screens, your whatever, all right? It cleans them so well, it looks like you just peeled off that clear sticker off them. Inky black, I promise you, I guarantee it. Check those out. They're really reasonably priced. Go over to jchristina.com. Maybe I'll stick a link here or something. But don't forget that coupon code AMCC20. AMCC20. Go check it out. Pick it up. I promise you, you will love it. And I want to hear back from you after you do check them out. Anyways, getting right into it. I'm going to compare the 80D a little bit with the 90D um, as a point of reference, I guess, right? So that we can get an idea of where they've come from, where they are now, and is it something that you might like or maybe not? So to start out, the 80D came with a 6,000 by 4,000 sensor, all right? Whereas the new one is 6,960 by 4,640, basically a 4K sensor, which makes sense. This camera will be shooting 4K. Also, the 80D had a 24 megapixel sensor, whereas the new one has a 33 megapixel sensor. Now, the 80D did have the Digic 6 processor in it, and of course, the brand new 90D will have the 8. It's new. Of course, it'll have the brand new processor. Now, maximum ISO changes. Maximum ISO was at 16,000 until it expanded, right? Once you do any kind of expanded ISO, basically it just looks like crap. So you don't want to do that anyway. So 16,000 was maximum with the ADD, whereas the new one will go up to 25,600. Now the ADD did not have IBIS, no in-body image stabilization, nor does the 90D. There is none. Now, both the 80D and the 90D both have a touch screen. They both have face detect. They both have live view. All of that remains similar. The fully articulated back screen is identical from the old version to the new version. Both like a million dots, I believe it is. They're both LCD, TFT screens. Nothing has changed there at all. Even the built-in flash, still the same built-in flash. Not that we should ever use that. Now, connectivity, I would have thought would have changed, but it also remained the same. The ADD had USB 2.0 built into it, whereas the brand new 90D has 
USB 2.0 built into it. What happened to USB 3 or 3.1? We want to future proof this thing, not go into the stone age. What are you doing? I, I don't, that I don't get. That I don't get. So next is where we start getting into some major changes. Now, frames per second, continuous shooting. The ADD would be able to do seven frames per second and that's it. Whereas the brand new 90D will go all the way up to 11 frames per second. That is really pretty quick. Not bad, not bad at all. Now in video, we also have the change, whereas the ADD would do 1080p, 60 frames per second maximum. That's what we're shooting this video on right now. Now the new 90D will take that 1080p and instead of being maxed out at 60 frames per second, it will go all the way up to 120p. Really great. That is really nice for being able to do slow-mo. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm so glad they did that. Now, of course, the ADD did not have 4K, whereas the 90D does provide 4K capture, which is great. And I believe that we're not going to have to worry about it turning off dual pixel AF and all kinds of other nonsense when we go up to 4K. So that is really nice. Now, as far as the SD cards in it, the old ADD would only be able to support UHS-1 cards, whereas the new one does support UHS-2 cards. I like that because it's just faster to be able to take the data off those cards. UHS-1 are just slightly slow at this point. Now, the battery life also changed. We had, I think it was 960 frames you'd be able to get out of it, whereas the new 90D would be able to get 1,300 frames out of it, which is really kind of nice, considering according to what I'm seeing, they still use the same LP6N. So. What they're doing to be able to get those extra 340 frames or whatever they're doing is whatever kind of magic Canon has up their sleeve, but it's working obviously. Now, GPS, neither of them have GPS. I don't see that coming into any of these cameras in the near future. So to sum up, what are those major changes between the 80D and the 90D? Well, number one, you have an extra nine megapixels, which is nice with the 90D. You also have the new Digic 8 processor, which is great. You have an extra four frames per second continuous shooting with the new 90D which is nice, all the way up to 11 frames per second. The 1080p went from 60p all the way up to 120p for slow-mo, that's awesome. Also, now the 90D does 4K, that's great for a lot of us that vlog, we wanna do 4K, right? You wanna see my ugly face in 4K, I know you do. Yeah, maybe not. So, also, of course, we have that faster SD. Instead of the UHS-1, we have UHS-2 in it. That's great. And we now have the longer battery life. So all that rolled up in one, you're going to pay what? How much extra? Well, the answer is zero. Nothing extra. The original ADD came out at $1,199, whereas the new 90D with all this new niceties in it is going to be coming out at $1,199, the exact same price. And actually where the ADD came out at $1,799 with their 18 to 135, that lens is like a staple even to us pros. <laughs> That's a really nice lens. Whereas instead of $17.99 for that kit, they're putting it out at $15.99. So you're going to get the 90D with that 18 to 135 at $15.99. $200 cheaper. Not bad at all. That is a really great setup for a cheap price, a really cheap price. So what do you guys think? I am probably going to pick up this camera. I look at this camera as almost getting to that point where it's turning into that hybrid. If you turn this camera's live view on, you're basically at it like a mirrorless camera, right guys? We're really, really close. We still have the nicety of having that shutter to bang around if we wanna do flash and do it properly. Um, but we can also throw it into live view mode and turn it into basically a mirrorless camera, right? It's possible. I like the idea of a hybrid camera. I know we've been going so far down the road of mirrorless, mirrorless, mirrorless. And mirrorless has some really great things about it, right? Well, DSLRs have some really great stuff that 
makes them DSLRs, right? Especially with flash and flash sync. And there's other stuff that I do like. I like to be able to look through an OVF in comparison to an EVF. Some people like that augmented reality when they look through their camera and what they see is what they get, that WYSIWYG thing, all right? I wanna just see the world around me as it is with an OVF. That's just my personal opinion, but everyone likes different things. So I like to see something that is more of a hybrid, and maybe that's where we're gonna end up going. Instead of just killing off all DSLRs and doing this entire mirrorless thing, and that's it, maybe they will find this happy median. Is it possible? I don't know. I think it might be. It just depends on what type of R&D is going on behind the scenes. Are they doing it? Are they going down that road? Are they just trying to phase out DSLRs completely? I really don't know. I don't have the inside you know, scoop on what's going on, but I wanna hear from you. I personally will be picking up this 90D. Why? Because it's gonna be my vlogging camera. Now I do think, just like the title states, I do believe this to be the best vlogging camera when it comes to value at 4K. At $1,199 for a 4K camera that will just lock on focus. And we know that we can be safe, we can be confident. We know as vloggers, we don't have someone that's behind the camera to know if we're in focus or not. We know that when we stick one of these Canon 80Ds in front of our face like I'm doing now, I know it's going to lock on in my eyes, on my face. I know it's not gonna be sitting there focusing on the background and later on in post-production, I look at this and I pull my hair out because I have to go and redo it, all right? I don't have to worry about that with the Canon Dual Pixel AF. And supposedly, Canon has even done it one better. Supposedly, their autofocusing system is even better than it was before. Now with eye tracking as well as the face tracking and subject tracking is even better. On par supposedly with Sony and we will see how that all plays out. I'm going to do some tests when I get this camera in and I'll let you know if that is fact or fiction, all right? So anyways, what is your thoughts on it? Do you like what they're doing? Do you not? Is a 90D maybe in budget for you at $11.99? Is it something that you're looking into? Would you possibly be buying it? Or are you just not interested in Canon at all and you don't even want to hear about it? You know, where are you at with this camera? All right. So anyways, guys, as always in the comment area, put those comments. Let me know your thoughts. Let's have this discussion. And don't forget, once this discussion kind of peters out a little bit, move it into the community community.jchristina.com. Go over there. Once again, check that out. I absolutely love the interaction that's happening over there. And the moderators that have come on board to help me out are exceptional exceptional. So check that out. So guys, as always, if you enjoy my content, please throw me a big thumbs up. That would be stellar. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button so you can get all my content when it becomes available and click the bell icon here somewhere so you will be notified as soon as they come out. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and give me your support. I would really appreciate it. That's it. Many blessings to all of you. Thank you so much for being here for Tea Time. Once again, we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.